What does your poop say about your health? Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, it's good to see you again. If you haven't met before then, hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm a qualified nutritionist and soon to be PhD student. I do vegan health and nutrition videos as often as I can in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag AskGojiMan. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below or alternatively send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. As always, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering consults, the SIBO, organic acids and stool tests via my website. So if you have any health or digestive digestive problems then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. For most, they don't even pay attention to their stool. They go once or a couple of times a day, pull the flush and carry on about their business. For others, going once or twice a day would be a luxury as they may only be going once a week. But it's really important that you pay attention to your bowel movements and what they look like because they are often a very good indicator of your overall digestive health. Abnormalities in colour, shape and texture could be a sign of health problems, it could be a sign of infection or it could be a more serious health problem such as cancer. So today I will quickly show you what is normal, what is abnormal and what you should do about it if you have problems. So before I tell you what your stool tells you about your health, I want to break down what a normal stool is like. So to start with, a stool should be medium to dark brown and the brown colour is caused by the pigment called bilirubin. Bilirubin forms when red blood cells break down. Secondly, your stool movement should have an odour to it. Not like a putrid smell, but obviously bacteria in your stool will emit gases, so it should have an odour to it. Thirdly, a normal stool should be pain free when you pass it and it should require minimal strain. Fourth, the stool should have a soft to firm texture and it should come out in one or two pieces. Fifth, normal bowel movements would consist of going one to three times per day. And lastly, your stool characteristics should be consistent. You shouldn't be fluctuating between constipation and diarrhea, etc. Next up, I'm sure you've all seen this chart, but for those of you who haven't, it's called the Bristol stool chart. The chart simply characterizes the different types of poop. A normal stool consistency is three to four, constipation is one to two, and five onwards reflects loose bowel movements. The last area that I want to talk about before we discuss what you do when you know there is a problem is discuss stool colour. If you have black stools and it looks like coffee beans, then it may indicate gastrointestinal bleeding. Supplements such as activated charcoal or iron could also turn your stool black. And it goes without saying, if you are passing black stools, then you want to go to your doctor and get checked out as soon as possible. If your stool is white, grey or pale, then again visit your doctor because it could indicate a gallbladder or bile issue. For green stools, this is usually a result of eating a lot of green foods, but it could also indicate that you have too much bile and not enough bilirubin in your stool. Red stools can indicate that you've eaten too many red foods, such as beets, or it could indicate bleeding either internally or via hemorrhoids. Orange stools could be caused by eating foods high in beta carotenoids, or it could be a sign of blocked bile ducts. And finally, yellow stools, particularly if they are very greasy, could indicate too much fat in your stool caused by fat malabsorption issues. So from this video, you should now understand what a normal stool should look like. So if you have any abnormalities for more than a few days, then you want to go and get checked out by your doctor. Now, if you go and get checked out by your doctor and they say you are fine despite having digestive problems such as gas and bloating, then you could look at doing a stool test or a combination of different tests to identify where your issues are coming from so that you can start fixing your health problems. Problems. Now there are a number of problems in the gut that can cause irregular stools and many of these your doctor won't check you for. So they may check you for H. pylori, bile issues or C. diff infections, but some of the following things your doctor is unlikely to screen you for. So a comprehensive stool test detects a number of important constituent parts of your stool from bad bacteria, parasites and also yeast and candida. As well as these, you also get evaluated for your beneficial bacterial levels, your gut immune function, your general gut health, which covers all things such as short chain fatty acids, pH, mucus and inflammation markers, plus much, much more. 
It's a really useful test and an effective tool for helping you pinpoint what's driving your health issues. So let's quickly jump into a sample report and have a run through what you get tested for and what this all means in terms of providing useful information upon which you can start taking action on. So after you've done a stool test and sent it off to the lab, you will get a report that resembles this. And the first section that you will get to in this report is the bacteriology culture. And you can see it's very simplistic and follows a traffic light colour system. So green is your beneficial bacteria and the yellow is your commensal bacteria. Now your commensal bacteria are typically okay and normal in lower quantities, but if they are present in larger quantities, then they have the potential to cause gut dysbiosis. And then to the far right we have the dysbiotic bacteria, so these are the pathogenic bacteria and the ones that can cause diseases in the gut and beyond. Now there is usually a number of common drivers for bad bacteria to take hold in the gut and these will usually be the use of antibiotics, contaminated water, medications such as the contraceptive pill, low fibre intake, pesticides and other chemicals and toxins, and also things outside the diet such as stress. So as we move down, we come to the yeast cultures. So here we are really talking about candida. Now in a healthy person, you would expect yeast to be present in low amounts in the gut, skin, mouth, and also in the junctions of your gut. So if you have high amounts of yeast that appear in the red column, then this will typically drive symptoms such as stomach cramping, abdominal pain, nausea and also bloating. It can also create symptoms outside of the gut such as brain fog, skin issues and also headaches and tension headaches. Next on the report is the parasitology information section. Now intestinal parasites are abnormal inhabitants that can cause damage to your gut and health. Now most people assume that parasites come from developing countries but the reality of it is is that you can catch parasites from your water supply, from your pets and their fleas and from unprotected sex to name a few. Now the two most prevalent forms of parasites are protozoa and helminths and these will cause symptoms ranging from abdominal pain and cramping, flu or fever like symptoms and mucus in your stool. Left unchecked, these parasites can then cause damage to your gut lining and cause leaky gut, IBS, nutritional deficiencies, joint problems and pain, skin conditions and they can also reduce your immune function. The next section of the report looks at digestion and absorption. So essentially what we are looking at is how well your gut is digesting fats and carbohydrates and whether you have any malabsorption problems. So essentially is your body taking the food and breaking it down properly or do you have undigested food in your stool? So the next section is the inflammation panel. So here you can see things like lysozymes, lactoferrin, calprotectin, white blood cells and also mucus. So lysozyme is an enzyme secreted at the site of inflammation in the gut. Elevated levels are typical in those with irritable bowel disease. Lactoferrin is another inflammation marker and this can help to distinguish between irritable bowel disease and also irritable bowel syndrome. Now the white blood cells in the stool are present when there is inflammation in the gut resultant from the infiltration of leukocytes which is part of your immune system. And the final inflammation marker is mucus and this is generally present when the gut lining is irritated and it's typically present in high amounts when the patient has colitis type gut diseases. As we scroll down slightly further, we get to the immunology and secretory IgA. Now secretory IgA is an antibody that plays a pivotal role in gut immunology. So essentially it's your gut's first line of defense. So numbers outside the reference range tells you you have gut immunity problems where your immune system is potentially unregulated. Scrolling down slightly further, we come to the short chain fatty acids section. Now these short chain fatty acids are produced after the fiber that you eat is fermented by all of your good bacteria. Now these short chain fatty acids are sent all around the body but do all manner of roles such as assisting in cell metabolism, helping your immune system and also playing a direct role in your neurotransmitter production. So if you have anxiety or depression then you want to be looking at these numbers. Just a few more to quickly run through before we finish off. Next is the intestinal health markers. So red blood cells, pH and occult blood. So you obviously don't want blood in your stool. So if you do, then it will likely indicate colitis or other gut or bowel diseases, or more seriously, it could indicate colorectal cancer. And the pH of your stool simply tells us the fecal pH. And this is very much dependent on the strains of bacteria that you have in the gut. 
And the final part of the stool test is the bacterial susceptibility section. Now this section is really useful because it tells you that depending on what type of parasite, yeast or bacteria you have in your gut, what natural antifungals, antibacterials or antibiotics would be used to treat that particular infection. So I hope that video helped you to understand what you should be keeping an eye out for in your stool, when you should approach your doctor and if your doctor isn't giving you the answers that you need then there are tests available to help you identify the root cause of your problems. And that's the end of today's video, I hope you all enjoyed and as always remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live and I'll see you next time.